All right, when it comes to attacking on Ascent, um, remember, you kind of need another smoker, right? Because you're going to commit to something that you cannot change in most situations, so you are not a primary smoker. If you're going to smoke and wall A, you cannot just go back to B and expect good results because you're just going to get pushed from market and from CT. So you can't really do anything. Uh, but if you have a primary smoker, you can do a lot of stuff when it comes to lurking and obstruction vision with just one wall while your other teammates are uh, focusing on other sides. So I have few um, walls that I use on attack and I try to limit my options to those. I like conditioning my opponents to a specific wall that I use so they never know if it's a fake or not. Now, uh, the first wall that I use is something that I use on the A. There are two options here. Uh, you can either use this one even when the barrier is still on in both options. One, in case you need to cut off doors and heaven, you can do it this way. It's not perfect. It's not perfect because uh, the thing is... This cuts off generator as well. And you have then no info if someone is standing in this corner or not. But it's like a necessity in case you don't have a smoker. Like that's one of your options if you want to keep your toxin cloud for the post plant. Right? But it's also not not badly needed. Right? So basically this is how it looks while you try to execute. So the only thing that you have to worry about is if someone is behind this. If you clear everything else... You have to still worry if someone is still behind this uh, this wall here. But it's one of the better walls that you can use on A. But if you have a dedicated smoker, you can have a better wall. You can still use it from the same angle, but you do it in a straight line like this. So you cut off the button and you cut off the first entrance from heaven. And then your primary smoker smokes a heaven when it ends with the wall. Just like in my YouTube guide, right? Or smokes. So you do something like this. Aim higher because it, ha it has elevation, right? So you do it like this. And this is also pretty good. The other wall as well is because you can control the orb because it smokes it off. Someone can go to wine, but you know that, right? So you can play around it. So when you pop it, you have control over the, over the, um, over the angle here when it comes to the, to the doors. And you have like first contact also here. It has to end with the wall here. So people have to commit, right? You can also do one more thing to make it... Uh, that depends if you want to do that or not. Because it's a two-way street. You can do this wall in an angle that also covers the button from here. So you do something like this. Uh, what you try to achieve with this, if someone is holding that button, you're gonna kind of make him move. And DK at the same time. So this should be good enough. I think. Let's check. Remember to practice that stuff. Yeah. So when someone is standing here. Is affected by the DK. It should be even a little bit more. Towards this wall here. So when someone is standing in this corner. He's being affected. And his vision is obstructed. Right? So whenever you peek. You have an easier frag on this guy in the left corner if someone is standing here. Then another wall on B. My favorite one. Uh, it's pretty good also when you attack alone on B. You have to wait till the barrier drops because the barrier is here. And what you do is going to take a wide swing to the right side here. And you will align, align your wall with two walls on B side. So one... This is important. One point is here. The second point is here. You need to cut off two vision points from CT and market, right? And you can only do that with this kind of wall. Like this. Your teammates probably already pushing here, so they will check those corners, right? But once you pop the wall, nothing is visible. And you can push and you can only worry about the angle from the boat and from the highway. And if someone pushes you through this wall, he needs to commit to it. So he's fully committing. If someone is holding it from this angle, he has a free kill, basically, right? While other people are just pushing through here. So this is actually a fantastic wall also for the post plant because it cuts off vision as well from the stairs here. If someone wants to push you here, well, then he has to commit 
through this uh through this wall. The thing is, remember that snake bites. I hate playing for post lineups. Like you shouldn't do it. In most cases, you shouldn't do it. You should use it for side control. So whenever I push on site and I'm with my with my teammates here or on B, I'll never go to play for post plant lineups. Because it's more important to just defend this. I'll probably just use the Toxin Cloud here. Maybe even if I have enough time, I can set up the one way on here, right? Instead of doing this here, I can just set up a one way here. Like this. So now I have both ways covered for my teammates whenever we want to defend from sight, right? And then I use my snake bites in crucial moments to stop the push and delay the defuse, right? I don't want to play for post-plant lineups on B side um, here on, on Ascent. When it comes to attacking A though, sometimes you're going to have a lot of time to play post-plant lineups or presence on site already. And then you can use the post-plant lineups from two spots that I primarily use. One here. So one is here and one is here. So my opponents never know from which angle will I use them. I prefer to have lineups for two things. For default and for the second default here. You're going to use your ultimate sign and align it with the bulb here. And then you move the the middle sign of the ultimate towards the beginning of the um of this bulb so it looks like this and this is for the boxes so it basically covers this area but also backside of the boxes whenever someone jumps from here typically he hides behind it so you have like you pushing them out as well now when it comes to the other lineup is you're gonna uh, you're going to use another bulb, this bulb here, right here, this one. You're going to align your left-click crosser like this. This was a little bit complicated, but if you practice, it's okay. You align this crosser with this left-side bulb here, and now you drag it forward, sorry, upwards, like this, till it meets the cable. And you put the cable in this small box here. You see this? This is your lineup. And it covers both this plant, this plant, this plant, and it pushes people away, right? Remember that whenever I create a post-plant lineup, what I want to achieve with it is also to know where the people will go after they're being punished uh, for the um, by the snake bite, right? So let's let's look at it this way. I'm gonna do the lineup. And now when someone is defusing this, if he was defusing from this angle, he has to move here. So I know exactly where to pre-fire. If he was defusing here, he also has to move here. So I know his backside of generator. If he was defusing from here, then I know he's going to move here. So there's always a specific angle that you can pre-fire when you zone them out by using the snake bite. You're going to use your snake bite line, this white here. On this spot here this box here and you're gonna use this it's basically the same as the one before now when it comes to uh, the other default you're gonna align because we want to do this, right? We want to do this. Then we're aligning the line from the ultimate. Here. This line from the ultimate. On the edge of the wall. On this like triangle ending. Like this. And it covers everything here. And when someone is defusing the spike from here. The only way of him changing an angle is going here. Right? And if he's diffusing from here, then he has to go here. There's no other angle. So when, whenever someone is on the spike here, you can pre-fire this angle or pre-fire this angle. Or pre-fire both. Uh, one more thing. When attacking sites as Viper, when you have an ultimate, there's a very easy way of going into, 
um, into a site with your ultimate. What you can do is either you can ask your teammate to put a smoke like in this spot here. For Omen Astro, this is very easy. Right? You have everything covered. No one sees you. You sneak in and then you ult from the edge of the smoke. And you have the entire site covered. You can also use the same by just setting up your own snake bites. And this is something I rarely do because I try to have a second, uh, I mean, a primary smoker. So the lineup, you jump, you jump up here. There are two things that you can do with this. You basically stand on the barrel here and you have two things. One is the lineup for the entrance that you can do. Uh, and this is basically you align. It's pretty easy to do. You align your left side triangle that you, you know, remember this one, the faint triangle with this line of this explosion like this. So it lands in front of the site. You pop it and you can go in into the smoke and use your ultimate. Now the second lineup from the same spot is for heaven. In case you use your wall for doorway, you can put uh, your smoke on heaven. And this is probably the best smoke you can do for heaven. Uh, you just aim at this <laughs> glitchy edge of the building. Like this. This way. A little bit higher. No, this should be fine. And when you pop it, people have really hard time going outside of this. So in case you have no smokes, you can do the wall on the doorway and then the smoke here. But then you have no toxin cloud um, for the post plant. Remember about that. So then you play side control. And the post plant lineups for B, I showed you already. Um, and you don't want to, sh to use them most of the time anyway. Alright, I think that's all. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. More maps will be recorded very soon uh, because every single map has a little bit different playstyle, at least for me. Thank you much for watching. Leave a comment, maybe subscribe, and see you on Twitch for the daily streams.